Peter Hanlon, Director of Water and Energy, the Water and Energy Program over at Grace Communications Foundation. Gracelinks.org is the website. Peter, welcome to the program. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, tell me about this, uh, this report that you guys published over at EcoWatch. Consumer Reports finds eating tuna too risky for pregnant women. Sure. Well, this is actually a, a paper that we did um, based on Consumer Reports. Did a, a study recently, and just to give you a little background on what's going on. Um, back in June this year, the Food and Drug Administration released uh, some new draft dietary guidelines, mm. which encourage pregnant women to eat fish, um, providing not just uh, a maximum amount they should eat each week, but also a minimum, which is a new thing for them. Um, and the reason they did this is because the research showed that pregnant women just were not eating enough fish um, for the nutritional value. And so they recommended that women who are might become pregnant, as well as young children, not to eat four particular fish species that are known to be high in mercury. And mercury is a problem because that's a, a neurotoxin. So particularly shark, tilefish, swordfish, king mackerel. And that's great. Um, but one thing that was left off is uh, tuna on that list, which... Uh, it can be high in mercury at times, and is actually the second most popular seafood in America. So it's just a lot of people eating a lot of tuna. Um, so what happened is Consumer Reports looked into this um, uh, draft guidelines and looked at the benefits and risks. And you know, Consumer Reports obviously they're a great trusted source, great at risk assessment like this. They don't accept ads. And what they found is that the FDA's recommendations just don't quite match their data. Um, so there's a great example of this where um, the FDA is saying that women should eat up to six ounces of albacore uh, tuna per week. Yet, for example, a 125-pound woman would exceed the safe limit determined by EPA by only eating four ounces. Or a 48-pound child could surpass the same limit with just a, a third of a can um, in a week. And that's assuming that the safe limit is actually safe. I mean, you know. Yes, yeah. And there is, you know, it goes back, it's still uh, an issue to be studied. And, you know, it, what makes it worse, too, is sometimes the amount of mercury that's found in a can of tuna can vary really wildly from can to can. So, right. you know, the FDA's own data shows that there can be, I think there was 20% of cans tested since 2005 contain almost double the average level of what uh, is listed. Now, these are all large ocean fish that you're talking about. So they're, it's the top of the food chain syndrome that uh, the, uh, presumably this is mer mercury coming out of uh, coal-fired power plants? Well, yeah, that's it. That's what makes it such a fascinating story. It's really you know, the energy choices we're making are impacting um, food choices that we have to make here. So, you know, like you said, you have mercury coming out of power plants and other industrial uses, um, settling into the ocean. As they go down the water column, they're converted by bacteria into methylmercury, which is the really highly toxic version of mercury. And that just works its way up the food chain, and, you know, we're at the top of that. Um, and so all that mercury is built up from, you know, smallest phytoplankton up to, let's say, you had swordfish or shark or something. It would be extremely high. And so you have to monitor how much of that fish you're eating based on the mercury levels. Right. Um, has there, if I could just... Uh, change the topic very slightly for a moment sure. um one of the big concerns because of fukushima is that uh, hundreds of millions of of pica curies of, of radioactive elements or of curies actually millions of curies of uh, radioactive cesium have been released out of out of fukushima into the pacific ocean this is an element i i lived in germany the year that Fuk that uh, chernobyl melted down and this was a major freak out there because, you know, because this stuff uh, got in the food chain, too. Um, cesium, the body thinks that cesium is potassium. It thinks that strontium is calcium. Um, there's this syndrome called Chernobyl heart. People around Chernobyl were, because the heart absorbs so much potassium because it's constantly beating. It's a substantial muscle uh, that, it was, that the radioactive cesium was burning holes in the hearts. Are, is anybody l looking at... These ocean fish, particularly Pacific Ocean fish, that that literally go from one side of the Pacific to the other in the course of their lifetimes, uh, for cesium, or has has all the attention been focused on mercury? Uh, as far as cesium, I don't know uh, enough about the research that's been done, but I think mercury definitely has been studied, in particular because just the explosion of coal-fired plants in uh, China, right. and we're starting to see you know increased levels in certain areas of the Pacific. Um, now, so now, okay, so of concern. The, the original mercury freakout back in the 80s, 90s, as I recall, was um, all the mercury that was found in the, the rivers and lakes in the United States, in the continental United States. Don't eat fish that you catch. Um, is that still the case? 
Um, well, it's it's really as the mercury works its way. There are definitely freshwater fish that are, are high in mercury. There's some trout, for example, that are high in mercury. Um, if you catch them in the wild, example. So, um, yeah, I mean the mercury levels in thankfully in the U.S. are starting to go down as some regulations are starting to kick in. Yeah. But it's it's still a concern for freshwater as well. Now, salmon are large predatory fish, uh, they are. carnivorous fish, and so you would assume that salmon would have high levels of mercury also. Um, is that different for farmed salmon? Because so many people say, oh, I don't want farmed salmon, I want line-caught salmon, which would be wild salmon. Isn't wild salmon far more likely to have mercury than farmed salmon? Because the farmed salmon, they, they feed it these pellets of whatever it is. Right. It's, it's actually really interesting. Uh, wild salmon is actually extremely low in mercury um, and high in omega-3s and you know various other nutritional um, elements. And that's, that's the thing about this story and you know sort of about the fish and mercury story is that it's not necessarily don't eat fish. It's really about just trying to avoid mercury. And right. salmon is a perfect example of really low in mercury, extremely... How know, does salmon high. avoid avoid mercury if they're uh, wild salmon, if they're eating other fish and those fish are, are eating fish who ate the, the, the phytoplankton? Right. Um, it's or it, the algae. It actually, yeah, they... Tuna, things like, uh, say, tuna, but also, you know, swordfish and everything, they're eating, like, the larger fish on the upper... Uh, traffic scale essentially, mm-hmm. and uh, salmon tend to eat more uh, vegetable matter. So, oh, so salmon are omnivores rather than carnivores. They are, they are, yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. I guess that makes sense because the pellets that they're feeding them. I, I, I saw the composition once of them, and they, they have like corn in them and things. I'm like, wait a minute, you're feeding this stuff. Yeah, fish? exactly. And it, really, the way to go, honestly, is a well managed, sustainable salmon fishery, and that goes with any fishery, frankly. Yeah. Um, you know, the wild salmon has. It's not just you know, for the health, there's also a whole other aspect of it's great for a lot of our fishing communities that are out there. They're really struggling to make ends meet, and there are a lot of fishermen out there that are doing the right thing, that are fishing sustainably, and that really need to capture that market. And this is another example of, you know, you eat fish that are low in mercury, you know, at the right time. You know, occasionally you can have that tuna if you're a healthy adult, but um, you're really, you're helping out local fisheries and you're being healthy as well. Right, and and with that tuna, do you really want that mercury? I understand mercury is like thirty or forty times more of a neurotoxin than lead. Um, this is potent stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Peter Hanlon, uh, the uh, director of communications uh, or the director of the Water and Energy Program with Grace Communications Foundation. GraceLinks.org is the website. Peter, thanks for dropping by. All right, thanks so much.